What is up, everybody? This is Trent with SoutheastPitReport.com here with Garrett of the Color Morale. How you doing, man? How's it going, man? Good. All right, so uh, you guys are on the Apollo X tour right now. Uh, how's it going? It's going great. It's uh, pretty excited going into it. It's a uh, big tour of, of friends that all know each other and have toured together before. So, yeah, it's exciting. It's just uh, it's like a big reunion on this tour. It's cool. I honestly can't say how many times I've seen you guys play with the word alive, like interchangeably. Like so many, It's been so many times I've seen that. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, they're, they're like unofficially our, our tour brothers. We've toured together so many times over the years. They're all great dudes and a great band to watch every night so okay. so uh, you've had a record out for a while uh, how's that been how's the response to that been so far since it's been released yeah we've had the new record out for a little over a year now on, on fearless our first release on fearless it's been uh it's been great overwhelming um our band's you know it's done its fourth record and we're still you know at a gradual rise um you know a lot of a lot of people in the music industry kind of gauge a band's importance by how many records they're selling or how many tickets they're selling um, to where with ours I feel like there's there's more of a authentic and organic lasting impression okay. as to what we're doing you know yeah. while we tour so yeah. or with it with our band in general so um, yeah it's been it's been awesome just seeing the the reaction and, and the connection you know every time we play every song that we play it's great okay so real quick why do you guys pick with fearless um, I think it was just a good fit for, for our goals, uh, both the long and short term and, and what we wanted to accomplish as a band and, uh, just, they're a great team over there, super, uh, open to, to ideas and, and, uh, you know, very supportive of everything we want to do as artists. Okay. Uh, this is kind of like a throwback question since you guys have been around for a while, so it's kind of like an old question, seeming sounding question, but, uh, what does the name, the, the color morale actually mean? Um, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like an incorrect phrase, um, Color would be written in context of a verb, uh, meaning uh, add, add optimism, insight, um, or a hopeful, positive attitude to your, to your morale, um, your personal everyday journey, whatever that may be. So it's kind of like a, like a mission statement for the band. Um, when Steve and I um, you know, changed the name of our old band and started the Color Morale, kind of wanted to have an explanation as to, as to what we were and why. Um, so that's kind of what the, what the title means. Now, uh, we've talked before, you know, what you hear nothing more about a certain thing about your songs and your CDs about how uh, there's a little thing if you play it backwards. What can you talk about that? Yeah, there, it's funny that nobody's really uh, ever found them. Um, I think the second and third records both, uh, there's parts and songs that if they're played backwards in a CD player, there's hidden messages and, you know, nobody still has ever gone. And Illuminati confirmed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the messages on there? Got to go find them. Oh. <laughs> no hints or anything? <laughs> Got to do the work. Yeah, so uh, go check out their older stuff if you haven't yet and find out what these messages are and everything. Yeah, the, the songs may or may not be Demon Teeth and Living Breathing Something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, where we touch on that, before the 22nd and 3rd record, you guys had a dramatic shift in sound from, like, I guess, more of a, I guess, vocally a deeper sound, you know, more of a cleaner tone to more of a raspy, you know, like, lighter scream sound and stuff. So, like, what made you guys, I guess, change your vocal technique and the music and everything? Um, I think for me, that was kind of a point in my life where I was going through a, a pretty dramatic change, um, going through a rebuilding process and, and starting, kind of starting my life over, um, reevaluating what I was doing as an artist in the band and, and if I really enjoyed what I was doing and, and I, I really wasn't, um, I didn't like the way I, you know, I was using my voice and, and, uh, kind of just pre, preconceived vocals, you know making my voice sound like something that it's not supposed to sound like um so yeah I, I going into no hope i just wanted it to be the the most organic and and you know raw and realist sound i could i could convey uh with with what i was saying um so yeah it just came out as get into a room and get in with the microphone and and yell about things that you're you're uh, emotional about um i don't have to worry about having a metal core scream uh <laughs> You know, if you if you're pissed off or you're affected emotionally by something, you don't think about how you're gonna sound. Oh, yeah. You just you just execute yeah. initially, you know, yeah. and and how you feel. So that's what the vocal change was. I know I've I've seen a lot of comments like people that like the old people that are a fan of metalcore yeah. that like the old you know first two records that we did. Um, so I, I feel like the next record, maybe we should bring back a song. You know, maybe we should just write the heaviest song I've ever written as a band, and I'll go back and do low vocals, you know, and, and make a song for for okay. for, the, for those. You know, realistically, those those are fans that have followed our band since 2008, yeah. all these yeah. years. So you know, why 
feel like it's this isn't about me you know okay. as long as I'm being honest in what I'm saying then yeah maybe we'll bring back some some super uh, super metal dynamic of the band okay. you know even though I just I'm not even into really screaming anymore to be honest <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to just sing but hey, go for it man yeah. do, do whatever you feel man um, so you know with uh, I guess our Two questions in one. Um, going forward, are you guys keeping up with the, you know, had no hope, now you know, uh, hold on pain ends, which, which is like a, I guess, a little thing with hope, you know, little letters coming out of it. Uh, so going forward, are you guys keeping up with the hope theme? And number two, it seems like a lot of bands now have that whole, I guess, positive message, the preachy positive message, you know, and a lot of, sometimes it comes off of cheesy, sometimes people do it for profits, you know. Um, you know, I, I personally can tell you guys are authentic about it. So, like, how do you guys try to set yourselves apart away from, oh, this is a gimmick to make money versus this is who we really are and this is a, uh, what we're what we're really about yeah i feel like uh you're right the the whole the whole hope core thing i've heard that term before <laughs> like hope core yeah, like gary you saved my life you know that kind of thing and the reality is that having having a message conveyed of hope through heavy music has happened 20 years ago you know that's nothing new um just kind of became a it's almost like this this it's almost like Christian hardcore became a thing and every band was a Christian hardcore band and then it was huge and then, you know, all of a sudden there were no more Christian venues and no more Christian music festivals and no more Christian hardcore bands, yeah. you know, and the few that were authentic about it uh, and really lived what they, what they, you know, they really had the lifestyle backing up what their belief system was. Those are the bands that are still on tour right now. Yeah. Um, so I try to worry less about, less about what's, profitable or what's popular um you know that's not our band i i've i've had the the word the message and meaning and validation of hope since i was a kid um i'm not a christian there's a bible verse in hebrews hebrews 6:19. 19 uh, may hope be the anchor of my soul it's kind of i've always found that ironic because 619 was my birthday um and that's just kind of resonated with me since i was you know 14 15 years old so okay. Yeah, I've always kind of, I've always loved, just that, that was just kind of a, of a, a title of an idea, um, and for me, you know, going through our our third record and where I was in life, no hope was more of a lifestyle change for me than it was an album title, um, and I just, you know, I stepped back and I just saw how how deeply it affected so many people oh, yeah. in a positive yeah. way, so, and at the same time, man, if if gimmicks are gonna fuel music i'm not gonna change that i can just worry about me so if uh if hope is going to become the popular thing then great i'd yeah. rather it be that than some dumb bs that yeah. means nothing <laughs> so yeah. uh your tour mate uh i think it was last year or year before chris uh, chris emotionless white he's uh put out the whole statement like my band didn't save your life i didn't save your life uh are, are, do you stand behind that kind of thing like you know like people who i guess don't commit suicide because they hear a song or love a band they find the willpower to do it or do you really think music or do you have like a separate view where like music can in fact save someone's life no i i totally agree i think uh i think the point that chris was trying to make in that is is not to look at band members as saviors or as uh as responsible you know give your credit uh to yourself where it's due um you know, we're all inspired by something, yeah. whether whether we admit to it or not. And I think the point that he was trying to make is, you know, be inspired by me, be inspired by the music I create, be inspired by my art, but don't think that it's solely responsible for for you not committing suicide or you, you know, give yourself credit too. That's yeah, a that, sure. that's a decision. You know, like it's like taking a medicine. Uh, I take a medicine for depression but I can't expect to just take a medicine and my problems are gone. Oh, yeah. I have to work with my medicine, you know, or, you know, another medicine I take is sitting behind our merch table all night, every night. That's something that I do because I, I have to. Yeah. Um, I also have a lot of respect for you to do that, to go out there. Whether you guys are opening or headlining, you're back there at the merch table doing your own band stuff, and uh, you don't really have this cocky, I'm better than you kind of thing, and I really I really respect that about you. So just yeah. want to throw that out there as well. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, going back to your, your question before this, that's kind of my way that I prove to myself um, that I have action behind everything I'm saying. Um, you know, there's there's never a time where a band will be f too far out of reach to to have that one-on-one -on -one connection to where you can, you can connect as an artist and as somebody that's been through detrimental and problematic situations, you know? Okay. Um, that's what I love about this and about being an artist and about touring is 
I have an opportunity every night to, to do something, yeah. you know, do something good. Yeah. Um, whether it's behind closed doors, no one will ever know about it, or whether it's something, you know, being in the band gives me a platform to, to inspire somebody else to do the same. You know, it's, it's great. It's an opportunity every day, and for many, many years of my life, I looked for a reason to even be here. Yeah. So I feel like I, uh, I'm reaffirmed daily with that. It's, okay. it's, a, it's a gift. Okay. Yeah, one of the coolest things I've ever heard was uh, I was at a four today show with, and straight from the Pavitz playing and Drew uh, asked the group, he's like, uh, who here believes in God? All the Christians raise their hand. Who, who doesn't believe in God? You know, the people who didn't raise their hand. And he said, who's here for music? All the hands went up in the air. And so uh, I guess that's a true testament to like, you know, like whether no matter what you believe, you know, music can like impact lives and everything. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if if uh, if someone were to ask, you know, can music really save your life? I th yeah, it can. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like I'm living proof of that. Um, if I didn't have music in my life, uh, you know, I might have, I might have gotten too overwhelmed in one of those detrimental situations. And there are bands, there are artists, there are things that are responsible for inspiring me to make changes in who I am and what I do with my life. So, I think you know wh whether your answer that's yes or no. Mine's yes because I, I authentically believe that I'm here because of music. Okay. So. Okay. Well, we got a couple of fun ones for you. We're gonna wrap it up here. Yeah. Um, if your band was on a, if your band was on a, the show Survivor, and, and who would win, and who would go home, and also the whole tour package, if each band was a tribe on Survivor, which band would win and which band would lose? Oh man, jeez, um, that's a tough one. I feel like our band is pretty okay with with scraping by with the bare minimum. Okay. So I think we would all, we would all be pretty good for a while. Um, Aaron would need, uh, he would need anything with marshmallow in it. Uh, Devin would need like a, a something to, to take care of his beard, uh, to groom his beard. Steve would just need Chipotle, and Mike would need a craft beer. Yeah. yeah. Can't find that on Survivor, though, so. That's yeah, I guess not. <laughs> I feel like Gilligan's Island, though, there would always be some way to find all of those. He would always find it. Can make okay. a phone out of a coconut. It's funny, though. They could never find a way off the island. They couldn't make a boat. He could make a freaking walkie-talkie out of a leaf, but he couldn't build a boat. <laughs> okay, so you're saying he would win out of your band? Yeah, I suppose. What about what? The, yeah. the bands? Oh, man. Jeez. Uh, well, pretty body looks pretty scary. They look like they're pretty big dudes, so, I mean, maybe... I don't yeah, know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mess with them. I wouldn't mess with them. I'd say probably them. Okay. I don't think anybody'd mess with them. <laughs> All right. And if you could hang out with Date, Mary, Taylor Swift, or whatever, and she ended up writing a song about you personally, what would it be called and what would it be about? Oh man. Uh, I actually posted a picture on Instagram the other day. She she uh, she hurt her thumb, and I, I ripped a hole open in my thumb, and I had it like being hold, held shut by butterfly bandages, and I like I. I posted at her. Um, I would call the song "I'm Feeling 20 Ooh" <laughs> because that's uh, that's the hashtag that I made for it. Because it's when you tour full time, you just beat the hell out of yourself mentally yeah. and physically and and you know emotionally and yeah, I'm feeling 20 Ooh. Okay. Well, mine would personally be called "He Stayed" because I'd never leave her. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and one last one. Uh, it, what is an awkward or unique uh, thing you've had to sign or fan experience or anything? Something that's just like sticks out that's pretty weird or different? Um, I signed a, a full-size, brand-new, unused surfboard that was like a $1,300 surfboard. And it was, it was this dude that was just a really, a really serious surfer, and he got this authentic surfboard. I don't know anything about surfboards or companies <laughs> or anything, but he asked me to sign it and he wanted to just hang it up on his wall. Okay. Um, That's very interesting. I was his favorite vocalist and he's he's he was a singer. He's like, I'm a singer and a surfer and those are my two biggest passions and I'd love nothing more than to have this to hang it up. Oh wow. I was like, dude, it was literally like a surfboard, like a real Yeah, thing. yeah. You know? So he brought it into the show. He had to security wouldn't let him bring it, so I had to like walk him Oh yeah. you know, at to the door with his big freaking surfboard. So okay. I think that was the most memorable. Okay. I've signed some weird things so <laughs> there's been a lot. I always hate signing like like iPhones even yeah, tonight that, like yeah. I f I'm literally ruining your phone like <laughs> it will never be worth anything. I promise you that. It, it's ruining your phone. I don't know. By the iPhone 20, I don't think it'd be worth anything yeah, unsigned yeah. either. So. Yeah, probably not. 
Okay, uh, is there anything else you want to say before we uh, close it out here? Um, just thank you to, to anybody watching that, uh, that gives us, you know, the, the time or the uh, attention to see what we're doing or listen to what we're saying. It means a lot, and thanks for letting me keep being an artist and letting the band keep doing what we do. Okay. All right, appreciate it, man. Good seeing you tonight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is Stretton and Garrett with Southeast Fruit Report and the Color Morale. Check us out on uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter and all that stuff. See you guys later.